Hello, I'm Greg Lamb with the Sleater Group. This is part three of my review of the US edition of Xero. In this video, I'll talk about the import and export of data, add-ons, reports, sales taxes, Xero's accountant tools, file attachments, mobile apps, payroll, and offer my overall opinion of Xero. Xero's ability to import and export data via spreadsheets is quite good. Most transaction types can be imported. For example, if I go to sales, you'll see the import button. Likewise, if I go to purchases, the import button is also there. Now, if I click on import, you'll see that there's a template file that can be downloaded to help with the formatting of data. Most lists can also be imported as well. If I go to settings, then chart of accounts, you'll also see the import button. So it's fairly simple to get data into Xero. Getting it out, you can't export a lot of the transaction types via spreadsheet, such as sales and purchases, but most lists, like your chart of accounts or contacts, you can. However, using Xero's free-to-use API, you can export most data. What is an API, you ask? It stands for Application Programming Interface. Basically, it allows other software applications, like e-commerce stores, for example, to exchange data with Xero. However, it can also be used by any user to import or export data. For example, if I go to Xero's API Previewer, I can then go to Invoices, and execute this get command, and I get a list of all the invoices. Of course, it's in an XML format, so not in a great format for humans to read, but it is an easy way to get your data out. I should note that now QuickBooks Online also has an API Explorer. So I can do the same type of operation in QBO by going to Invoice, then Query, and add in one. So in QBO, it's a little more complicated than just saying execute, because you also have to add an SQL query. For example, this one has select from invoice, and then you click on try it, and you get an XML data dump. I found Xero's API a bit easier to use since their get and post commands, or in other words, viewing and creating invoices, worked without having to do anything extra in Xero's API Explorer. On the other hand, I had to read a bit of QuickBooks Online's documentation to figure out how to use their API, even though they also have an API Explorer. Of course, take my evaluation with a big grain of salt, as I haven't delved deeply into either API. Let's move on to reports. Xero is in the process of updating its reports as of May 2014, as you can see here. The new reporting style has been brought to age payables, receivables, and expense claims first, but it's supposed to be rolled out to more reports in time. What this new reporting style brings is not only a new look, but an ability to further customize the reports by going to Report Settings. Once you set up your customizations, you can save the report as a template. I really like this, and I'm glad Xero is finally getting some better reporting functionality. However, for the majority of reports, an update to the style has not been done yet. So if I go to the Profit and Loss report, you'll see that it looks like this. This shows the amount of filtering and customization that you'll see in most reports. You can filter by dates, compare the numbers with other periods, and sort the data by account name or type, and then by a track and filter if you've set one up. In this example, the track and filter is by region. So, you can adjust some report settings, but at this point, QuickBooks Online offers more customization for reports. Xero does allow you to switch to reporting on a cash basis if you so desire, and the reports are easily drillable by clicking on line items. And you can see that I can keep on drilling down further and further. Now let's check out sales taxes in Xero. Please remember, this is a review for the US edition of Xero, so how Xero handles sales taxes in other localized editions will vary. This is how the sales tax summary report looks like. Xero calculates its sales tax report based on if you choose a sales tax code when entering transactions. This means that if you post a transaction directly to a sales account, then it won't show up in your sales tax report. There is also only a single sales tax account that can be used. I find this makes keeping track of taxes a bit challenging. I personally like how QuickBooks Online has its sales tax center and it has all the sales tax functions in a single page, which include creating new taxes, tracking them, providing reports, making adjustments, or paying them. You can do all those functions within Xero, but they're a bit scattered throughout the software and it's just not as easy to do as in QuickBooks Online. Xero does have some flexibility when it comes to taxes though. If we go over to the contacts page and add a new contact, you'll see that we can assign a sales tax for a contact. 
The same type of thing can be done if you go to the chart of accounts, where I can assign a sales tax code to an account. And again, the same thing can be done with items, where I can assign taxes to items purchased as well as items sold. In Zero, if you're dealing with taxes in multiple jurisdictions, like with an e-commerce store, it may be necessary to use an add-on, like TaxJar, to handle your sales taxes. While sales taxes in Zero can be assigned to contacts, the taxable status is not automatically adjusted based on the ship to address. Let's talk about what Zero has in store for accountants. Zero has basic accountant specific features like an audit trail, user roles, ways to manage multiple clients, and lock dates. Zero also has something called Practice Studio, which is a suite of tools including a practice manager, work papers, reporting, and tax. Practice Manager was actually just launched in the United States in June 2014, and it's a tool for accountant practices to manage their projects. Work Papers, on the other hand, has not been launched in the US yet. It's a tool to aid in working with staff and client data. The takeaway is that Xero is working on providing tools to help accountants and their practices, but it's very much a work in progress rather than a completely finished and polished suite of tools. It does signal, though, that Xero is focusing on winning the hearts of not only the small business owners, but the accountants as well. I'm going to move on to file attachments now, and we'll start off by going to the files page. This page is kind of where all your files can be accessed from. I'll explain the kind of in a bit. First off, there's an inbox. You can drag and drop files into it, like so. This works really well. Not all formats can be attached, but pretty much all the ones you'd want to use in an accounting setting, like PDFs, Excel files, and Word docs are attachable. To look at an image file or a PDF, you can click on it and there's a really nice viewer that will pop up. You'll notice that it handles images a bit differently than PDFs though. For example, with images you're able to rotate them. What I find handy about this viewer is that zooming in works quite well. And it's also easy to resize this window. So I can just, you know, resize a little bit over here, then a bit over here, and I can even move it around. This is useful when you're trying to work off the documents when creating transactions. Once a file is in the inbox, you can attach it to the major types of transactions directly by clicking on Add New. However, if you go directly to various transactions and lists, files can be attached to most of them, whether it be a journal entry or a bank account. Now here's where I'm going to explain why I said the files page is kind of where you access all your file attachments in Zero. You see, when a file is in your inbox and you attach it to a transaction, it'll disappear from your inbox. However, below the inbox, you'll see that there are other folders. If you put a document into a folder first and then attach it, it'll remain in the folder. So the inbox is for temporarily holding files, while the folders will cause the files to be accessible from the files page permanently. Now, one of the cool things about files in Zero is that you can directly attach them to transactions while reconciling. So I'll go back to the dashboard and then reconcile this item. What I need to do now is add details. From here, I'm able to drag and drop a file in. I should note that directly attached files like this don't show up in the inbox or folders of the files page. As nifty as attaching files while reconciling is though, I find it's a lot speedier to add the transaction first and then go to account transactions. I like this view because here I can see which transactions have attached files and which don't. If I need to quickly verify the receipt, I can click on the icon to pull up the viewer. And to add a file to a transaction, I can simply click on the transaction and then drag and drop a file in. Overall, I like how files works in Zero and use it with my clients, but I still think a few tweaks, like showing all attached files from the files page, can be done to improve files in Zero. Now on to mobile. Zero has mobile apps, both for the Android and iOS platforms, that amazingly lets you reconcile on the fly. It actually works quite well. However, something that is missing is the ability to add bills or spend money transactions using the mobile app. You can see here that there's an expense section, but this only adds expense claims, which is meant for employee reimbursements, not for business expenses paid from a business bank or credit card account. You can see that the mobile app has the ability to create invoices, but once paid, the invoices are no longer viewable. And then the only other section in the mobile app is the contact section. Overall, I find Xero's mobile app to be more limited in functionality than some of the other online accounting software out there, like QuickBooks Online, Zoho Books, and Cashew. I'm completely of the mind that a mobile app doesn't have to do everything that the web app can, but expense capture seems to me one of the things that a mobile app is suited for. 
I should mention, however, that you can actually capture receipts. You just can't enter in the transaction from the mobile app. Perhaps this is because Xero is trying to direct the workflow of processing expenses via the reconciliation page. Lastly, I'll quickly touch on payroll. Xero does have built-in payroll for certain states in the United States. To get the latest state coverage, I suggest going directly to Xero to see. However, the integrated payroll can't handle all payroll scenarios, so you may need to go with an add-on provider. Luckily, Xero does have a few payroll add-ons to choose from. In general, I think Xero has a lot of power and flexibility, but with it comes a bigger learning curve than with other online accounting software. I definitely recommend getting help setting up and using Xero if you're not familiar with bookkeeping, accounting, or accounting software. Once things are set up and you know where to go and what to do, I think it's fairly easy to use. And just remember, what I'm doing right now is not a set of training videos, but instead review videos, so I'm breezing by the features quite quickly. So my videos may be confusing to those who don't know about accounting software. If you're a beginner, Xero actually has a whole series of videos designed for beginners that shows how to use the software, which I'd recommend watching. If you've watched my other videos, you may have noticed that my Xero videos tend to be a bit longer. I've purposely done this because Xero is still so unknown to many, and I wanted to point out the little things that I think make it either stand out or be a cause for concern. It's also because I think it's the most similar software to QuickBooks Online, and QuickBooks software as a whole is very popular. I definitely recommend using Xero, but I'd also recommend using other software as well, like QuickBooks Online, Zoho Books, Wave, and Cashew. It all really depends on your exact business needs. For a detailed analysis of Xero, please check out my ebook called Online Accounting Software Finding the Right Match. And for more videos like this, please subscribe to the Sleater Group YouTube channel. I'm Greg Lamb with the Sleater Group, and I'll catch you on the flip side.